And Jesse writes, does it hinder my return potential if I'm investing in target date funds in my 401k instead of using different ETFs or mutual funds? Jesse, thanks for the question. We've talked about target date funds before on the show, but it, obviously if you didn't listen for our listeners out there, we want to start by defining what that is. And they've become very popular probably over the last decade to two decades right. in 401k uh, programs. And, and really it's because of the simplicity of them. Generally, if you know what a target date fund is, you're going to, or if you don't know what a target date fund is, you're going to know when I talk about this. It has a year written on it and they tell you to choose the year of your projected retirement and put your money in that or potentially put your money in that they're, so, they're normally done in five-year increments right. so so if you were to look at your plan right now you might see a 2025 2030 2035 etc and scott you're right it was done a lot for simplicity when people would look at their investment choices and not know what in the world to invest in they felt like this kind of simplified things mm -hmm. and and jesse's question is does it hinder my potential return and i want to talk about that in a forward-looking manner but first i'd actually like to to, to dial the calendar back a little bit and okay. let's go back to before interest rates rose you know people would go to, to the target date fund and feel like i'm in a quote-unquote safe place to invest my money because it's based on my timeline and therefore my risk level but scott the problem with that that a lot of people didn't understand at that point is you know the balance between stocks and bonds in any of these particular holdings the closer you get to the date on that target date fund the more bond allocation there's going to be. And prior to the interest rate changes, people felt like bonds were a safe place to go. But as interest rates rise, bonds sit on the opposite end of the seesaw. So as, in, as interest rates go up, bond prices go down. So there were people sitting in these target date funds who thought they were safe and doing what they were supposed to do. And they kind of got their clocks cleaned yeah. on the, the bond allocation in there. And so, Jesse, I would say... Could it hinder you? Yes, it could. It's important to understand what's under the hood yeah. and what's going on, like what could impact what's under the hood in those particular uh, uh, sub-accounts. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting because it's it, we talked about the simplicity of it, and it's really built to kind of click it and forget it, just to put it on autopilot. Right. But right. that's kind of the exact opposite of what's going on under the hood of most of these target date funds, right? Because if, you, if you're generally in an all-equity fund, you're going to be in all-equity until you decide to change things. Right. But in a target date fund, it's going to be put on what we would call a glide path, mm -hmm. which, is going to, which is going to change the allocation the closer you get to that projected retirement date to be more in fixed income and less in equity. Because the idea, as Janet has rightly pointed out, it's not always the, the true uh, return of this, but the idea is the fixed income component is the quote unquote more conservative portion of the portfolio. But that is so you have to know that your allocation between stocks and bonds is going to go farther towards the bonds as you get closer to that retirement date. Now, Jesse doesn't tell us how old uh, he and quite frankly, he or she, she is. I, <laughs> I, I would have leaned towards she the way it's spelled. We yeah. don't know. Yeah. So uh, but they, we don't know how old they are. Uh, but certainly picking a, a, a date far out in the future would give you more equity exposure. It's hard to say and you can't say for sure whether the return potential would be better in something else, but it's perfectly okay to be in a target date fund, but you have to know what's going on and whether it's appropriate for you. Well, and, and I would even think about the Scott, our buckets of money approach type thing mm -hmm. that if we're talking about all in, in a target date fund, then I, I cringe at that. Yeah. Honestly, even not knowing, you know, what you have specifically, I would cringe at that because when, you, when you are approaching retirement, and again, we don't know Jesse's age, but when you're approaching retirement, in terms of your investments, that's not a stop sign. Uh, a lot of people think about, you know, I've got to go ultra, ultra, ultra conservative with all of my investments because I'm about to retire. Yeah, but some of that money you're not going to need for 20 or 30 years. And so some of those dollars still need to be in growth mode, if you will. So I, I definitely would not be all in. And I think that that lends itself to really where we ultimately want everybody to be. And that is to have a personalized plan. So how do you invest, Jesse, for you and for you? 
your future. I think that's key. I think it's uh, it's interesting for me to point out too when we think about the the uh, money that we manage for clients here at Gen Wealth and we put that into the investment strategy that is built for their retirement income, but they may still be working, and we may actually. Uh, advise on that 401k. We can't be the advisor on that 401k because we can't make the changes. So we're just offering recommendations is really the way I should put that. But we might make a recommendation for someone who's going to retire a year out to put new dollars into a 2050 or a target right. fund, right? Because right. you want some volatility uh, in that instance or for that person to, to have some volatility takes advantage of dollar cost averaging. So the date that you're going to retire does not always necessarily need to match the date of that target fund. So the real problem for me, I think, as we wrap up this question, the real problem with target date funds is you still need growth in retirement. So you don't want all of your money to start swinging towards fixed income as you retire because you still have to outpace inflation from an income perspective. And the only two asset classes that have historically done that over time are equities and real estate. So if you're all in fixed income, you're not in a place that at least long term historically has outpaced inflation. And whatever your retirement income is going to be, you're going to need it to get larger over the course of your retirement. Another problem, you still need a withdrawal strategy in retirement. If you think about that money shifting towards fixed income, but still having some equity components, and if you're planning to withdraw out of your 401k for your retirement income, you are exposing yourself to sequence risk because Janet's already pointed out a couple of years ago, 2020, or last year, 2022, I'm already into 2024. Did you see that? <laughs> 2022 was the second worst year on record for a 60-40 portfolio. So you think about if you're pulling out as the value is going down, it is going to accelerate the depletion of your assets. But ultimately, and you've already pointed this out, Janet, you still need a plan in retirement. Right, right. And, it, and it has to be, we believe, personalized to you. Mm -hmm. 